What's up everybody? Thanks for clicking on the video. As you can see, we're back out in the shop and we've got all kinds of stuff going on. Specifically, working on the LS motor for the Nova. Today, I'm going to show you all about the Get'em Garage Oil Piston Squirters Kit. So what this is, is a jig that you can bolt into your main cap positions and it will let you drill through via this little channel and bushed guide and it'll set this up this one's already done and you go through and it allows a passageway from the main all the way to the back of the piston what you're going to do is take one of those little bronze or brass metering jets and install that in here they come in different sizes uh, talk to the boys at the shop if you want to know what you should run in your motor but this sprays oil from the main directly onto the back of the piston so that it keeps things cool keeps things from getting too hot, expanding, keeps detonation down, and has all kinds of great benefits, not only better lubrication. So I'll get this thing fired up and I'll show you how to cut one of these things specifically in this jig kit. It is very nice. I ran into one little snag though and I talked to Trevor over at Get'em Garage. I was having a problem getting these slots that align all the caps up to fit in between these two studs and basically what Trevor broke down for me was these blocks changed over the years their jigs fit all the new stuff I have a little bit older block so I had to clean this out and I just took a double cut burr for uh, an end mill extended length like six inches here's the part number if you want to do this yourself and I just run this down a little bit to where everything fell right in place got just enough room for adjustment this is the dimension here that locates it so this is really just a guide so that you can clamp it down if you keep all of that concentric it's going to be just fine now i think he's a little bit crazy but trevor says he freehand drills different blocks all the time but this man does this for a living i don't always use hearing protection when your air compressor is running if you have a loud one like i do so what you're going to want to do first when you get this in here run it down just loosely maybe by hand or slightly snug enough to where it's not going to wiggle around and you want to check this edge you want this jig to be perfectly parallel on both sides so you want about the same amount of bump on either end and you may have to experiment with your block a little bit to make sure that you get these holes lined up exactly where you want them side to side but trevor promised me that uh you can pretty well set this in here just about however you want so long as it's parallel it's going to line out and you're going to be able to get this done just fine i have two examples here this one i was a little bit far off it tapped just fine i had no issues this one i learned the trick and i got it centered up a little bit better and this tapped just fine no issues both of them clear both of them spray in the exact same position i won't have any problems So here we are fast forward a little bit and you can see the pile of shavings that are right down here and what that is is it's falling through the oil feed hole from the cam down through to where the bearing would sit for the cam but what we've noticed is right here got just a little bit of dust and debris pop out which means we're just about through on the other end so i'll bust out the camera and show you guys what this looks like Just about ran out of air pressure there shut the compressor off so that you guys could see and hear a little bit better but uh 
I think you get the idea. So once you've got that drilled, just take my piece of welding rod here and you'll see that that goes through and sprays right to the back side of the piston. Now the number one and number eight are at a slightly different angle. So if we come back up here to number three, you'll see that it's a little bit farther out and just just the design of the kit so you have a different jig for number one and number eight and then the other jig goes two three four five six seven so it'll do these three in the middle the other jig does the two on the outside and you only do the cylinders where the drill jig is going to point towards a cylinder if you put this on backwards you're going to drill a hole out the front of your block or the back of your block and that ain't gonna go well for anybody you're gonna be trying to figure out how to weld it up or put a plug in it so now that we've got that drilled out we grab our impact driver here real quick zip these guys off oops try not to drop your nuts pull off your socket and washer pick up your nuts that you dropped on the ground pull out your jig and look at the wonderful madness that you've created for yourself grab a little bit of shop air now we're ready to start tapping so the kit supplies you with one of these drill taps and they tell you not to run all of your threads through with this and I don't think it's actually long enough to get far enough in there but if you take this and a quarter inch socket on a ratchet this works perfectly to get things started and I'll show you and what we're gonna do is go and put this right on the money and we're gonna make sure that we're keeping the same angle as we were drilling we don't want this thing going in sideways or breaking off or having any other problems so we'll just spin this enough to where it gets started and stops and then we're just going to slowly and very carefully make sure we don't get any jumpy or notchy spots we want this to be pretty smooth all the way through there we go and we'll just get this started and run this down a little ways what I've been doing is going right up until about where the threads end up being flush. Right about there. And I stop and I back it off and I'm going to test a jet. And then I'm going to count how many threads are sticking above that and then proceed to get the bottoming tap plug tap whatever you want to call it out and run just those threads by counting the number of revolutions from the time that the bit stops to where it starts cutting. We're going to take our metering jet, slide that into place and as you can see we are starting to come out the back side a little bit but there's no problem there's a trick for all of this. What you need to do is take a 1 16th of an inch Allen you could use a socket or a traditional Allen make sure that's seated in there nice right there starting to get tight holding the ratchet up by itself good indicator that that's as far as it's gonna go so take your fingernail and count one two three We'll go with four revolutions on this one. that's right about where it feels like it's gonna start cutting so we'll go ahead and hold this up count four 
you can put a sharpie mark on your extension how many times that goes around I like that better so that's what we're gonna do there's one two three and four back her back off and let's give her another test At this point, it should be going in by hand. You shouldn't really have any resistance right up until it wants to start grabbing and locking itself in. There we go. Nice and tight. Just below flush. I think this is a perfect example of how these should all look. So I've got all my jets in. We'll take a quick look and I'll show you a couple of tips because I appreciate you hanging out to the end of the video. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So a couple of things that you're going to want to look out for, and this is going to be LS specific. The amount of material inside of this one over here is fine. But it, this angle is very, very close to the edge here, and I had to do quite a bit of work to shave this off with the drill bit to get this to go through and be flush and not cause any other issues. So if you're putting this jig in, knock it this way as far as you can, and then line this up, make sure it's parallel, bolt it down and drill it, and you won't have as much trouble with this. Now on this one, specifically the tapping portion of it, there is not a lot of material on this one alone because it's where the window of the block is and that is going to go through and cause some issues. This would be really easy if you started here and was tapping all the way through here and you did the same thing on this one, you're probably going to thread it out the end and then you're not going to be able to have a jet in the cylinder without a whole lot of more headache to fix what you just screwed up. So watch out for that. Here's a tip on that. Knock this all the way through. Be very careful threading this through. You could go way too far with just the tap drill. And that's all I got for you today on this product review. I give it two thumbs up for sure. I recommend this to anybody who wants to build a high performance or endurance motor uh, LS based platform. This kit seems to work pretty good. So I appreciate you guys and gals watching this video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up button if you appreciated this tutorial and go ahead and subscribe if you want some more Epic Tim related content. We have our 64 on the lift right behind me here. Going to be all kinds of fun things going on.